Let's pray once again. Oh Lord, thank you for that song. Indeed, Lord, we could do nothing but just to thank you. Thank you for what you had done to us and for what you're going to do. Lord, this evening, we would like to thank you as well for what you are going to impart to us tonight. Help us, O oh Lord. Give us, again, a spirit of humility that we may be able to learn from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, good evening. So maybe some of you are already, ano, no? already live for your weekend because this will be a long weekend since there will be no convocation. Okay. So this evening, this will be our last, no? Salamat, last. Um, how many you here uh, have heard the name Richard Dawkins? Richard Dawkins. You don't know Richard Dawkins? Okay. We have a particular subject in our course or in our program. The title of the course is Science and Religion. So in that we are taking it right now. So, in that particular subject, we are studying about, of course, how to reconcile science with religion. Because for, long, for, for, uh, for so long, there has been a lot of conflicts between science and religion. So, because of that, it necessitates our college because we are the one who is, um, you know, being acquainted with what is um, in the Bible. So that's why we're also um, taught about, or we are also being taught about what is in science, especially in relation to religion. So part of that, right now, we are watching videos about evolution. So if you're not objective enough, your first reaction will be, um, you will disagree a lot of, of, ano, of things about the video because, of course, you have already the presupposition about your faith. Especially me, I was born as uh, I was born a, a Christian, so I have already a lot of pre presuppositions or preconceived ideas about Christianity, about religion. So when I when I watch the video, I, I could not ano, I could not agree things about the video, of course, because. Because there are a lot of, know, there are a lot of things that disagrees about our belief. However, if you are objective enough, you will learn a lot of things. In that particular video that we are watching right now, there is a host there named Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins is a, a prominent biologist in the whole world now, and he is known about his idea of uh, evolution. And he adopted the, the concept of, uh, of Charles Darwin, and he is really uh, known because of his ideas and his um, studies about the life of Charles Darwin and about, about the concept of Charles Darwin with regards to evolution. So now, in that particular video, um, he interviewed an evangelical pastor. He went to Africa and he interviewed an evangelical pastor, and as he entered the church, he said to the pastor, so he introduced himself, he said to the pastor, uh, hello pastor, I am an ape. Are you an ape? So the pastor, well, of course, <laughs> he was shocked because Charles Darwin says that he is, uh, uh, um, Richard Dawkins said that he is an ape. No? Uh, actually, he, he, he said to the pastor, I'm proudly uh, presenting myself as a member of the African apes because uh, he was born there. He was Richard Dawkins, though he was uh, uh, he is an Afri uh, American. He was born in Africa, so he said, "I, I am an uh, African ape." So he is proud of being being part of of the world of chimpanzees or or apes. Now, as the video goes uh, as the video goes by, the the host, Richard Dawkins, said, suffering, struggles, 
and death are the reality of life. And he said, survival is the means and reproduction is the end. And he called that, and we, we used to hear that, survival of the fittest. And actually, that's why if you are not yet ready to watch it, don't watch it, but if you have an objective mind, you can watch it, no? But if you are if if you are if you are biased, <laughs> don't watch it because you will really uh, no, you will you will be convinced of evolution, no? I almost convinced, but of course, um, it's just for the sake of learning. Now, my point is, my point is, Richard Dawkins is telling us that the reality of life is struggling, suffering, and death because. What's the essence of happiness? When in fact, those who are only strong enough will survive. And that's why they had the concept of survival of the fittest. And he's telling that in natural selection, those species who came up now are those species who are strong enough to survive before. And that's why we human survive because we are strong. And you know, he said that the means is survival and the end is reproduction. And after that, no more. There is no purpose of life. The purpose of life is for us to exist and later on, there will be a great extinction and no more. And the cycle will begin again. And so for evolution, there is no purpose for life. But I would like to tell you this evening, my friend, that in the Bible, there is no survival of the fittest, but there is this what we call survival of the believing. The means is not survival. The means is relationship. And the end is eternal life. And I would like to share you tonight a story about this concept of reproduction in which we could find in John chapter 3, verse 1 to 21. I'm talking about a story of Nicodemus. Have you heard his name? Nicodemus can only be found in the book of John. His story can only be found in the book of John. It is interesting because you can only find two instances in which the, the Pharisees went to Jesus Christ at what time? By night. Let's, let's, let's read chapter 3, verse 1. Let's begin the story. I have, we have two observations and we're done. Okay? Chapter 3, verse 1. It says here, Now there was a man of the who? The Pharisees named Nicodemus. And this is the first time he was mentioned in the book of John. And um, it is the only story that uh, was recorded in the Gospels. A ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by what time? By night. And this is the first instance in the Bible that a Pharisee went to Jesus Christ by night. Or at night, at the evening. Later on, I will explain to you why. And he said in verse 2, the next part, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And in verse 3, take note of this, in verse 3, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Interestingly, if you're going to compare chapter 2 and chapter 3, chapter 3 has nothing to do with chapter 2. Are you getting the point? Because Nicodemus has a lot of, has this, I don't know, salute, salute, sa, how should I say that in English? Salutations, no? or, or greetings, and 
uh, he flattered first Jesus Christ. He said, I know that you, are, you came from God because the signs that you are doing cannot be done by just an ordinary being. I know that you, are, came, fr that you came from God. But you see, in verse 3, Jesus said, unless someone will be born of God, he will not see the kingdom of, of God. Now, if you will connect the, the statement of Nicodemus to the statement, of, to the statement of Jesus, they don't have any relationship. So, why did Jesus say those words when in fact, Nicodemus is not asking him about that concept? The answer is in chapter 2, before chapter 3, the answer is in chapter 2, verse 24. It says here, But Jesus on his part did not trust himself to them because he what? He knew all men and needed no one, verse 25, to bear witness about man for he himself knew what was in the man. So therefore, the only reason that we could imply in this chapter is that Jesus knows already what is the purpose of Nicodemus coming to him at night. And the reason why Nicodemus came to him at night, because you see, the Pharisees used to come to Jesus Christ during the day. And so therefore, we could conclude that the reason Nicodemus came to him at night is because he is afraid of being seen by people talking to Jesus Christ. And so Jesus, knowing the purpose of Nicodemus going to him, he directly said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, I know your heart, and I know the desire of your heart. I know that you want to know me, and now I would like to tell you that unless someone be born of God, he will never see the kingdom of God. And you know what? It is very interesting because it is only in this story that you can find in the whole book of John the phrase kingdom of God. It was mentioned three times in chapter 3. Let's read. Chapter 3 verse 2 or verse 3. Of course, it says there unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse, um, verse 5. Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And in verse 36, it was cleared, it was explained, what does Jesus mean with the kingdom of God? He says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see what? It should be kingdom of God because that, what, that is uh, what Jesus said a while ago. But it says here, Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. And so therefore, John is telling us that the kingdom of God here does not refer, that does, doesn't refer to any geographical location. It does not refer to heaven. It refers to Jesus himself. It refers to eternal life. It refers to a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you see, my friend, in this story, you can find the summary of the purpose of Jesus coming here on earth. For you and for me to be baptized, to be born again. Because first point, baptism is declaring that we want to belong to God. Baptism is a declaration that you desire to belong to God. It, baptism is not a desire to belong to a church. It will just follow. But baptism is more than belonging to a church, belonging to a denomination. Baptism is about belonging to the eternal life, no other than Jesus Christ himself. Baptism is about Jesus himself. 
And so therefore, if you are afraid to be baptized because you thought that it will just be a means for you to, be a mem to, be, to become a member of a church, friend, I would like to tell you that you will be baptized and you will accept Jesus Christ. Or you had been baptized before, not because you need to be a member of a church, but it's because you declare that you want to belong to Jesus. Baptism is a declaration of belonging to Jesus Christ. Second observation, verse 4. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yes, answered. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, I would like to explain to you this um, uh, for I don't know a, a little bit because we cannot we cannot we cannot expand the the concept of baptism here. But I would like to tell you this evening that the reason, one of the reasons why Jesus wants, wants Nicodemus to be baptized is because of the reality that each human being here on earth was born in flesh. And because we, we were born in flesh, we cannot do anything but to do whatever the flesh says us to do. Or tells us to do. For example, can a mango tree bear santol fruit? So what makes the mango tree a mango tree? Does it mean that if the mango tree has no fruit, it is not mango tree anymore? No. So what makes it mango tree is its root and basically it's seed so meaning to say what makes us sinner is not because we are sinning what makes us sinner is just because we are naturally born a sinner and that's why god would like to let us be born again because that is the only way for us to be born in spirit and bear fruit of the spirit and now, Nicodemus goes on and asking Jesus Christ, he said, Nicodemus said to him, verse 9, Lord, how can these things be? How can this happen? So he was now confused. Lord, yes, I know that I need to be baptized, but, but why and how? How should I accept baptism? And Jesus said, in verse 15, and later on in 16, he said in verse 15, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And what is the reason that you will believe in Jesus? Verse 16, for God so loved the world. When Jesus said those words, it is in reference to the question of Nicodemus to him, Lord, how can I be baptized? Jesus is telling him, believe that you were loved by God and he sent me to die for you. Because baptism is about, baptism is a declaration that you believe in God. It is not a declaration that you believe to me or in me or to someone else or to any religion. It is believing on someone. It is believing on a person. It is believing on eternal life. And that is no other than Jesus Christ himself. So, Dominic, what is, the, what is the purpose of Sabbath? What is the purpose of knowing the resurrection? What is the purpose of knowing stewardship? Sabbath is about Jesus. Resurrection is Jesus Christ himself. And being faithful steward is about Jesus also. The spirit of prophecy is about Jesus Christ. It is the testimony of Jesus Christ. 
everything in the Bible is about Jesus Christ. And so that's why you do not believe when you accept Jesus through baptism, you are not accepting him because of a doctrine, but you are accepting him because of him himself. And so don't be afraid of making decision for baptism because baptism is not just a matter of believing a church or a doctrine, but it is all about accepting and belonging to Jesus Christ. And the reality of life is not suffering. The reality of life is not struggling and not death. Because Jesus said, the reality of life is eternity with him. The reality of life is love. The reality of life is Jesus himself. And he said in verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever, and if ever there will be a chance for us to be condemned, it is not because God doesn't love us. It is because we do not believe him. Let's open our Bible in 1 John chapter 5. Before, once again and for the last time, before I make an appeal. Chapter 5, verse 1. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been, has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of God. And verse 11, and this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life. And this is life in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Of course, because Jesus in Christ Himself is life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. The purpose of life cannot be defined by evolution. Because evolution says, you will die later on and no more. But the Bible it te tells me, and if, I am, if the Bible is correct, I would rather have the Bible rather than believing that after death, I am no more. Because my Bible is telling me that God promised me something and that is in accepting Jesus Christ, I will be having life, Jesus himself, and that would assure me of my eternal salvation. Friends, I don't know, again for the last time, there might be someone of you here, even just one person, who did not experience yet baptism, who did not experience yet the declaration, your personal declaration of telling people that now I belong to God and now I believe God himself, you can do it tonight because salvation is today. And if you are that someone, for the last time I would like to make an appeal, if you are that someone, I would like you to stand tonight and as you listen to the appeal song, you can come forward as part of your commitment and declaration that I want to be baptized, I want to be belong to Jesus, I want to believe him because I can find the purpose of life in him. And as you listen to the appeal song, once again, I would like to invite you. Don't hesitate to come. Don't delay. 
Jesus is calling you tonight.